Hello and welcome to another first ride review and as you can see in front of me I've got Honda's brand new 2024 NX500. So as this is a first ride video, I will essentially take it for a bit of a spin, uh, give you my first impressions on the bike, and also go over some of the technical specs, and uh, basically, yeah, tell you what I think of it after a little bit of a ride. I will do some other videos on this bike, but here she is, looking quite nice in this white colourway, I think. So uh, those who are keen-eyed will know that this is basically a spiritual successor to the Honda the very popular Honda CB500X. So it's got a new name, NX, the NX500. Uh, we've got a 471cc parallel twin engine. We've got a 19 inch front wheel. We've got these rather sharp adventure looks. I do quite like this updated look for the NX500. What do you think? Do you prefer this or do you prefer the, the looks of the CB500, which had a bit more of a pointy nose? But yeah, I quite like this. But enough waffle, let's uh, turn on this brand new 5 inch TFT dash. This is actually the same dash um, from the Transalp, but it's got a different layout. Uh, so let's throw our leg over. 830 millimeter seat height. And how does that feel to me? I'm kind of on the balls of my feet, I can't flat foot it because I am a bit short. I'm 5 foot 8 with a 30 inch inseam. So if you are around about my height, you might be okay. Start her up. Now, unfortunately, because this uh, little parallel twin has got a 180 degree crank, it doesn't sound all that thumpy. Now, I get lots of questions about these gloves. These are the Re Risha Cruiser 2 gloves. And as you can see, they look pretty cool. Yes, Risha or Risha Cruiser 2. Right, let's head off. And we can chat about this new little lightweight adventure bike from Honda. So yes, the NX500 for 2024 replaces the very popular CB500X, which has been out for quite a while. I actually owned a 2017, I believe. It's a little bike that I if you've seen any of my videos, I'll put one just here. It's a bike I have a lot of love for. So yes, let's see if the NX500 is just an aesthetic update or is there more to it? So it's got the same 471cc parallel twin engine and it's putting out still 47 horsepower at 8,600 RPM. Thank you. And it makes 43 Newton meters of torque at six and a half thousand rpm now as far as i know uh, honda have not changed anything about the engine in terms of power or where where it makes the power but they have apparently fiddled with the ecu uh, just to give a little bit more torque it hasn't changed the peak torque but just apparently give a little bit more low down torque i can't really tell any difference if i'm honest but i would need to ride the 500x and this back to back Immediately I'm noticing those brakes are pretty good. What else can we talk about? Uh, braking wise we've got uh, twin piston Nissin calipers up front and those are biting down onto twin discs. Those are, put your teeth in, twin discs, 296 millimeter discs up front and at the rear we have a single Nissin uh, caliper, single piston caliper and a 240 millimeter disc. We have uh, Showa SFFBP forks up front those are 41 millimeter long travel forks now i did have a look at the press pack but i couldn't see what the actual travel was on the suspension so if i do find that i'll pop it up on the screen now but yeah essentially long travel forks we've got a truck in the road with some lights we've got a prolink monoshock at the rear and that has got five stage preload adjustment only. The forks have no adjustment at all, by the way. 
Now Honda say that they have changed the spring rate and some of the damping settings or they've changed the springs which in turn changes the spring rate and the damping settings as well for a, a more plush ride apparently and I have to say it does feel quite nice. Uh, we've got a 17.5 litre fuel tank, we've got an 830 millimetre seat height, the bike weighs in wet uh, 196 kilograms. Oh yeah, that front brake is quite nice. Um, what's the rear one like? Uh, it's a bit spongy, but I think that's probably because this bike has only done 400 miles from new. But alas, yes. Uh, what else is new? We've got a new front headlight. We've got slightly new looks. We've got a new name. Uh, there's three colours, white, black and red. If you didn't know, the actual NX name came from a bike called the Dominator, the NX650 Dominator, which was released in late, the late 80s and it was kind of a single cylinder air-cooled sort of on-road, off-road, trail thing and they sold that for about a decade and uh, that bike was kind of meant to be a good do-it-all commuter soft adventure bike and I guess this new NX500 is trying to appeal to that same ethos POWER! <laughs> but that plucky little 471cc parallel twin is as ever Jesus <laughs> thank you pheasant yeah is as ever brilliant and uh, it's an engine that is in many of their motorcycles so it's in the CB500F or which is now known as the CB500 Hornet it is in the Rebel it is in the CBR 500R, uh, it's in the CL 500 as well, I think that's it. Do let me know if it's in any more bikes or if I'm missing anything. There is mud everywhere, and crud everywhere. But yeah, it's a plucky little engine and while it doesn't make loads of power, it's got enough, certainly to be useful and to still be fun. Yeah, there you go. Plenty of poke from that little engine. One thing I will say about the engine is uh, just how smooth it is. Like, there's barely any vibration at all. And that's down to the uh, counterbalancer wizardry that Honda have done. As far as I know, it's got a crank balancer and a counterbalancer making the vibes almost imperceptible handles quite nicely too actually we'll talk about some more electronics so this year we've got uh, <laughs> uh, we've got HSTC which is Honda's selectable torque control so that's a switchable uh, switchable traction control system you just press this button here you can do it on the go and you'll notice now I've got a light on the dashboard dashboard telling me that my uh, traction control is off and you can turn it back on again if you want you know, there are plenty of people that would argue a bike of only 47 horses doesn't need traction control, but if you want to take this bike out on a very cold, wet, wintry day, it's just, it is nice having that safety net. It's not something you absolutely need, but, you know, you can always turn it off if you don't want it, which is the beauty of these systems. And it seems to be in implemented, put your teeth in, quite well. Right, we're just going to hop onto the dual carriageway here and test out the motorway speeds. Oh, I am getting a little bit of vibes through the foot pegs at six and a half thousand RPM. So there we go, 70 miles an hour, 70-ish miles an hour. Um, yeah, it's so smooth, like barely any vibration. I can feel a little bit in my feet, but nothing through the bars. So let's roll on the power a little bit and just see what it's like at higher RPMs. Okay, yeah, I can feel a bit through the bars now. So what I would say is up to 80 miles an hour, it feels pretty damn smooth. But from 80 onwards, you do get a little bit of vibes through, quite a bit through the foot pegs and a little bit through the bars. But below that, at 70 to 80, absolutely fine. What's the wind blast like? Well. It's got an unadjustable screen and it's not too bad, it's quite noisy. 
but I mean I'm getting a tiny little bit of turbulent air at the top of my lid but it's it's uh, I could live with that to be honest it's it's not too bad at all I don't know if you can get a touring screen I think you probably can a slightly higher screen that might help or get one of those little uh, spoiler things up front there but yeah it's a uh, a pretty comfy place to be. Like I said, at this speed, 70 miles an hour, barely any vibes. The wind blast is, like I said, it's literally just at the top of my helmet. And I've got a little bit of wind blast on my arms. Everything else is pretty much wind free. So I think long distance touring on this would be absolutely fine. The seat feels pretty comfortable, but I found, as with the old uh, CB500, I found after a, a couple of hours my bottom did get a bit numb, but we'll see on another video or do a bit more of a longer term update. But initial impressions are that the seat is quite comfortable. It's quite a nice riding position actually, you feel very bolt upright, very commanding, you've got these wide bars, good for leverage. My knee angle seems fairly reasonable as well. Um, Again, long-term or a long-distance ride would let me know what that's like. But uh, yeah, overall ergonomics, I think it's a pretty good riding position. I'm stuck behind a massive dirty truck. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the ergonomics a bit more. So yeah, wide bars. I feel my top half is very bolt upright. My knees are a little bit bent, but not awful do an overtake here. So yeah, all things considered, I think the uh, seating and ergonomics are pretty good. Again, just uh, first initial impressions. Suspension feels very, very plush, but actually quite uh, quite nice damping as well for the road. It's, it's not overly wallowy and soft, like even if I brake, it doesn't dive loads. Like I recently had a Tenere and that was so soft it was like Poe going up and down everywhere. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good damping from that suspension. The uh, Showa SFFBP, which is separate function fork, big piston. Now these uh, forks are very premium and they only used to put them on the bigger bikes. And then uh, a couple of years ago they started adding them to all of the 500s. And even the 300 I think has the uh, BP forks. They are pretty decent. Uh, for an out-of-the-crate solution, they are pretty good. The gearbox, six-speed gearbox with a chain drive, it's got an assistant slipper clutch. The clutch is ridiculously light, like literally <laughs> one finger. That's ridiculous, just how light that is. Gearbox is super slick. Yeah, that's lovely and lovely and smooth. I would say that this bike is just kind of improving upon what the CB500X already did. And uh, the good thing about the CB500X is it had several iterations and they'd actually got, by the end of the CB500X, it was actually a really, really good uh, motorcycle. It had decent suspension. Okay, the engine, the engine had gone through a few little changes, a bit more power. Um, it was like five or 6% extra torque but it's had quite a few revisions. And uh, the NX500 just pushes that on a little bit more with you know, a nicer dash, traction control should you want it, better suspension, uh, slightly better damping. Kind of bringing the 500X just up to kind of modern standards. And as I said, this has got the TransAlp screen even though it looks different, the actual display is different. But it's an optically bonded display, which means it's uh, better at anti-glare, naturally, or as manufactured. It's manufactured to be good. Mirrors are pretty good, very standard sort of Honda mirrors. We'll talk about build quality when we do the walk around just up here. Um, I really like the uh, this white colour. I think this is the colour I'd go for if I was to buy one. It'll be interesting to see what this is like doing a tour. I think with uh, it might 
get a little bit laden with uh, a pillion and some luggage. Now this bike is, I would say this is meant for soft roading, not proper off-roading, because it has got uh, cast wheels, which are a bit lighter this year actually, by the way. Let's go off-road, look. Look, we're off-road. <laughs> oh, sneeze carpet. Hello. <laughs> Okay, right, let's do a quick walk around of Honda's new NX500. Here she is. I think it looks quite nice. Like I said, it's got this new face, a new screen. It's got this little hole. Yeah, so this is uh, this little hole is to help with uh, like turbulent air and stuff to avoid that. Right, let's start from the front. We've got a 19 inch front wheel, uh, spoked cast wheels. We've got Dunlop mixed tour tires. These are kind of like a, I'd say, a 9010 road off-road tyre. We've got the Nissin calipers there, twin piston, 296mm discs. Two of those and two of the calipers as well. There's your big piston forks, 41mm. This has got the optional fog lights or there you go, little button there. These are quite expensive, I think these are like £530 or something like that. Which has got the bars as well. These are about, I want to say 300 quid, but if they're not, then you can look it up. Uh, there's the 471cc little thumper. You know, it's a 180 degree, degree crank, so it's not going to sound the most fruity, but it sounds all right. But uh, yeah, this is quite a nicely machined engine, and it's actually quite uh, characterful as well. I believe the frame is the same as previous generation's CB500X. It's got a... I don't know if the subframe is separate or if it's... I can't quite tell. It might be welded onto it. The seat, and it's a one-piece seat, looks very similar to the 500X. It might even be the same. The back end actually looks almost identical, other than this light. But LED lights, there's your 17-inch rear, and your single piston caliper just back there. There's your 17.5-litre fuel tank. This has got the little handy guard bits which, you know, they're not going to do anything in, a, in and off, they're just going to break, but they might keep the wind off your little pinkies. Here's the display. Now, I haven't really faffed around with it as yet, so I don't really know. Oh, there we go, we've got some display. Display type, oh look, we can, we can have different display types. We've got bar, circle, or simple. Shall I do simple, because it's like me? If we go back... There we go. Oh, that's quite empty, isn't it? Let's change that. That's a bit too simple. Let's try circle. How does that look? Uh, that looks alright. I actually think I prefer the bar. I think I prefer the bar type. I like being at the bar. <laughs> Brightness. Background. What's that? Oh, so you can have black or white. Should we do black? Because, you know, once you go... Black. So yes, this actually has the Honda Road Sync app. You can connect that up to your phone. And that does give you uh, access to your phone and stuff and does turn-by-turn -turn navigation, which is pretty good. You've got the little fuel gauge there, gear selector, speed, tachometer, trip meters, uh, trip A, trip B, as well as total mileage and fuel efficiency, economy, whatever you want to call it. 17.5-litre uh, tank, and they say it's good for about 250 miles. We've got a new switch gear with this little weird-looking button. I actually thought there was a bit missing, but I think it is meant to look like that. But uh, switch gear is okay, but I do prefer having the indicators here and the horn here. This is just a Honda thing. I didn't show you the monoshock, did I, which is just in there. Uh, if you want to change the preload, you're going to have to get your C-spanner out, I'm afraid, and get in there. Bit of a conclusion then, so uh, let's talk about engine. I love the 500 or the 471cc parallel twin engine from Honda. I think it's a peppy little bike and yes, only 47 horsepower, which does allow it to be A2 compliant and it means you don't have to get the bike restricted. But I think it has enough power and enough torque to keep you entertained and for it to be actually quite useful as a motorcycle to do many different things. The suspension, they say they've changed the spring rate and the damping. I'll be honest with you, I can't really tell the difference too much. I would have to ride the uh, old 500X and this back-to-back -to, -back to figure that out. But I guess it, all I can tell you is it feels 
lovely and plush. Actually, when you push the bike into some bends, it doesn't feel too vague at the front. Sometimes uh, bikes with 19 inch fronts can feel a little bit vague when you push them, but this one feels okay. Brakes do feel quite nice actually, lots of bite. Not massive amounts of power, but yeah, they're still pretty good. One thing I would say about this uh, engine is, if you do get your gear wrong, if you're in too high gear, and you go to throw on the power, you are gonna need to drop it down a gear or two just to keep the revs going and get that power down. It's not the torquiest of engines, but you know, if you're expecting it to be massively torquey and to pull dank wheelies in third gear, then you're barking up the wrong tree, essentially. But what it does offer is, uh, you know, good value for money, I think. It's 6,799 of your finest, finest British pounds. And I think that's remarkable value for money for what this bike offers you, which is, I think, a do-it-all road-based adventure style motorcycle. And, you know, it will do the off-road stuff. Not, I wouldn't do gnarly stuff because you're probably gonna end up, or you risk cracking those rims. Um, but certainly, uh, you know, sort of uh, some gentle green lanes would be absolutely fine. Uh, the weight, it's one of those things, yeah, at a standstill, you can feel that it is quite a heavy bike, but once it gets going, you can't really feel it at all. And it actually handles its weight quite well, unlike me. <laughs> Any flaws I can find. There's nothing immediately obvious that I can think of about this bike that I don't like, but I will try and find something just to be balanced and all that. Um, oh, actually, there's a little spot of rust just there. Build quality might be an issue. I think these are made in Thailand, and uh, I know it's a very humid environment, so perhaps some of the bits are sat around in that humid environment, perhaps. But you know, looking at the rest of the bike, it looks completely fine. That's just something I'm going to point out because I'm trying to find something neg negative to speak about. Ooh, pond. Um, anything else that I can think of negative? Uh, the seat isn't... I don't think the seat's going to be particularly comfy for long, longer, longer journeys. Um, so it would have been nice if they'd done something with that. But we will see when I do another video and I'll uh, take the bike for a bit of a longer test but yeah I can sort of feel my bum getting a little bit uncomfortable already but I think really that's probably the only few little things that I can think of right now plenty to like about the bike peppy little engine I like the looks decent suspension decent braking I think the price is very competitive should have gone down to fourth should have gone down to third there we go yeah it's not gonna set your pants a light but I think it's a bike that will do do many things and appeal to many people. It is a little bit on the taller side at 830 millimeters, so I guess we could say that's perhaps a slight negative, but it is an adventure style bike and they are all quite tall, aren't they? So I think with that in mind, I'll probably end the video there. But uh, suffice to say, I just want to say thank you very much for watching this video. If you do like what you've seen, don't forget to hit that subscribe button it doesn't cost you a bean and it really helps me out so I appreciate it if you do that and uh, if you do go out today do remember to ride safely but have fun of course otherwise what's the point point? and until next time you take care and peace